So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's the 4th of April and um, one of our guests arrived and Monica is here and Chris Sloan is here. You can see him on my screen. I don't know if anyone else can. But <laughs> anyway, um, so we, we put out a request, a uh, call for people to come talk about Trayvon Martin and the um, oh, everything that's happening around that and how we talk about that and how we bring it to our students or whatever. Um, we'll get into it here a little bit. We've invited a few people who might show up still. Um, I've invited a couple of students. One may come. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> Welcome, um, Monica, Chris, and Ashley Dennis. Um, right before we started recording, Ashley, you did introduce yourself, but why don't we do that again? Sure. Welcome. First time to Thank teachers you. teaching teachers. <laughs> Where are you from? What do you teach? All right. Ashley I'm Dennis. Ashley, Ashley Dennis, and I am originally from Dallas, Texas. However, I teach high school English in Anderson, South Carolina. It's about 20 miles from Clemson University. Cool. What grades? What grades do you teach? Um, I teach 10th and 11th grade. Hmm. Great. So I've got the big babies. <laughs> so tell us more about your school. And, you know, you saw us saying that we wanted to talk about uh, Trayvon and what happened yes. and what's happening yes. and your interest there. Okay. Um, my school has a 73% poverty index, so of course with poverty comes a whole lot of issues. I've got a large concentration of minority students, and so when uh, the incident with Trayvon took place, it immediately resonated with me, of course, because I'm African American, I have a son, uh, and of course with my students as well. Um, and so I brought it you know, to the attention of my students, and they had a lot of great things to say, but then you know, probably what, third period, I get an email from my principal to the whole faculty saying that we shouldn't talk about it. Don't talk about it, just leave it. You know. And so it was very frustrating for me because I believe the classroom should be a platform to speak about issues. Um, when you know different things happen, current events happen, the classroom is a great place uh, because that's where students learn. And so um, for my principal to tell me that I shouldn't talk about it, I felt very, very, very disempowered. Um, but either way, I wanted to join the group and just kind of listen to some ideas, what other educators are doing and how they're, you know, implementing um, talking about the Trayvon Martin incident in the classroom. Mm -hmm. can, and I'll talk a little more about what I've been doing, but can you, can you say, a little more about how you started to talk to the students? Definitely. Um, the first thing that I did initially was ask them how they felt. I'm not sure if that was the best approach because it came with an eruption of emotions. Mm. It came with an eruption of, of questions. Uh, some students hadn't even heard about it. So we kind of uh, told, you know, we calmed the classroom down and we started with some basic level one questions. Okay, what happened? And it was just amazing to hear my students say, well, I, I listened on you know, CNN and Anderson Cooper was saying this. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're watching CNN. And so they're really, really, really engaged. They're reading, you know, articles. They're, they're, they're looking at YouTube videos of, of how, you know, the whole incident took place. And so um, students were basically recounting what took place. So we started at level one, and then that's when higher level questions took place. Well, well why? Why did, you know, Zimmerman approach him or why, you know, um, you know, just just the higher level questions that would elicit a little bit more critical thinking. So at first it just started with an open um, ended discussion where students were able to chime in, share how they feel, recount what took place and just ask some um, questions just in general about why the incident took place. Mm hmm. Great. Uh, and yeah, you know, how do I? One of the, one of the things that I'm always interested in is what topics get brought to the class by me, <laughs> um, and certainly um, Trayvon Martin is one of those things 
that I have emphasized over the past week or so. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of my curriculum is, is, is about choice. It's about, you know, coming up with your own kind of explorations and, and following your own passions. Um, so I didn't jump on this when it started, you know, when, when it started hitting the media and so forth. But I noticed students wanting to talk about it. I noticed that, you know, they would come in and say, why don't we deal with this more? So they kind of pushed me into it. Um, and then getting the facts straight felt like a good place to start to me, too. So I kind of appreciate that. How did... But... Bleh, how do I... I also want to say <laughs> that I hope my curriculum is something that when teachable moments, and that's a tricky word, but I think this is absolutely a teachable moment. When teachable moments happen, it fits naturally into the curriculum. So that if my curriculum is really about learning how to deal with information, learning how to sift through the facts of something, you know, it's learning how to read and write well, learn, use multimedia, and we can go on and on about all that, then content on some level doesn't matter like what you're doing that with so when a civics lesson like this comes up it seems kind of crazy for it not to be there in the room so that's one of the thoughts i've had i agree and, wholeheartedly you know especially when it fits so easily into what you're already doing um, you know, especially in an English classroom, whether you're talking about a current event or you're talking about Steinbeck's The Pearl, they're life issues. And I think it hits home uh, more so with the students when it's something that's current. You know, not, not please don't get me wrong, but I'm not saying that the, the great works are, are not, you know, they're not important. But um, I think that when, when we can bring up these issues and it resonates with the students as well as you know, hit home with those learning object learning objectives. I think those are great teachable moments within the classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, my students um, started getting into it. Um, Ashley, I don't know, but um, if you know that Paul uh, and I have our students write in a place called YouthVoices.net, and um, so my students today, I just kind of threw it out there, or the past couple days and said let's um, just respond to some students work on youth voices and I noticed that a lot of them um, you know um, commented on the Trayvon uh, post that Paul students had done and you know you have to understand that I, I teach in Utah and so my students are primarily Caucasian and you know like it seems like that we're far away from the issue you might think um, but what I noticed was that the students were really keyed into it and had a lot of knowledge about it, um, and so their posts, I think, or you know, the comments on Paul's students' posts have been really interesting because they touch on a lot of issues that are really important to talk about in the classroom. Um, you know, Ashley, you talked about that. That's the place where these kinds of discussions should be happening, and so you know, things like. Uh, Jewish students said, "Well, yeah, it just shows that racism is still with us today." and we have to deal with it. Um, students also talked about, um, you know, her own um, uh, honesty about her own stereotyping that she does with people and that she uh, is aware of it and yet, you know, she still has to, um, you know, um, raise her awareness even more. Uh, another student talked about Geraldo's comments. So, you know, there have been a lot of interesting discussions so far and I think the next step is going to be, I'm interested in, in some of what Paul's students respond back to them, because a number of my students, despite all the other things I just said, a number of them said, like, wow, thanks for informing me, because I'm not really very uh, up to date on what the story is. So one of the questions is, does this story hit us differently 
you know, if we're white or black, <laughs> um, if our students um, are different, you know, how are they? Are, obvi I think obviously they are processing it differently. And, you know, as Chris pointed to, Youth Voices is one place, but there must, must be other places where students get together and can talk about their differences and their different ex expectations, their different experiences. I mean, Ashley, you said you said you have a son, and so this mm -hmm. hit you personally, kind of thing. Okay. Is that fair to say? Well, yeah. I, I mean, my son is—he's only seven. He'll be eight. But I, mm -hmm. I told him, I said, you know, Isaiah, I I could easily send you up to you know the convenience store and get you know those hot Cheeto fries that I love to eat, you know, and bring them back. And I said, you know, Isaiah, you, well, actually, I didn't have to say anything about the hoodie. Isaiah noted that because he, he, it's like, mama, I wear hoodies, you know, and every morning, you know, when, especially with the weather being a little cold, he'll put on his hoodie, you know, and so, you know, my son at seven years old had a lot of questions and it was just a weird place for me because as a parent, I had to have to talk to Isaiah, well, well son, there's, certain things that you can't do considering your skin is brown, you know, compared to another student, you know, or another, you know, young, young. Um, interesting conversations have taken place uh, between um, me and my son. But like I said, I, I told him that, you know, you, I could have easily sent you to the store. If you were a little bit older, I would have definitely you know, sent you to the store to, you know, go get me some Cheeto fries or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. And, and uh, it definitely hit home with my son. So, mm -hmm. connections. One one of the things that Monica talks about or has talked about, and you can say it yourself here in a second. But Monica, one of the things that I notice when we bring things that are happening in the world into the classroom. Um, is that it goes the other way too so that my students talk about you know the the richer conversations they have around their dinner tables because of what they've been doing in school um and and so when we t ask them to talk about connections they're making with people and with ideas because we're dealing with things that other people are dealing with in the classroom situation it gives my students something to to say to be an expert in in some way when they go home in some ways or just be conversant in so that's one of the things that's that's one of the things that defines a learning moment for me so in other words we're learning something as a culture and what can we do in the classroom to increase that learning so i'm just babbling here actually you were actually told and you have to not teach about this at all? Oh, yeah. Is that um, what's that's happening? Why when I how do they the, justify the, that? Well, and that's the thing. Um, so as you can imagine, when I saw the tweet, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. I, I really want to hear what, you know, um, other teachers are doing. And I, I, I looked at some of the lesson plans. Wow, this is really great. It's National Poetry Awareness Month. I, I could do this. But really, you know, it was it was shut down. Um, like I said, my principal said that we couldn't talk about it at all. And my students had organized um, a peaceful protest. And it was interesting. This is the first time that students at my high school have ever organized anything constructive, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so they all came to school. They had Arizona iced tea and Skittles. Um, they had it posted on Facebook, even to the point where when they went when a couple of students went to the convenience store, the convenience store clerk heard about the the, the process that they were going to do and gave them the Arizona tea and Skittles for free. You know, and wow. so it was a really, really big um, community event. So there are connections there, too. Yeah, exactly. And my principal shut it down. He had the police officers out there. Um, th he threatened them. This is crazy, y'all. He threatened them um, if they were to... Uh, if they did it, and if they were a senior, they would not walk for graduation. If they were an athlete, oh. they would get kicked off the athletic team. Uh, and there was one more, and I always forget it. See, athletic team, graduation. Um, oh, 
10 days suspension because it was right before spring break. Um, and so, of course, the kids were scared. It was just a really, really weird moment. And so, like I said, I sent an email out to the faculty and basically, um, and of course, included my principal. And I said, you know, we really need to be sensitive with this issue because it resonates with our students very, very, very strongly. Um, and I said, you know, the classroom, the same thing that I said earlier, is an excellent platform for discussions like this to take place. You know, we can do some higher level questioning, some inquiries, some classroom mm -hmm. discussion. We can create some things. We can do things that, you know, will help students master the learning objective, but also foster enriched discussion. Um, and so essentially, I received an email back from one of the faculty. He replied all and he was like, uh, basically, I don't know all the facts. And uh, if Trayvon Martin was white, would the kids be doing the protest? Uh, and then a couple of days later, I was sent into the principal's office and he basically, you know, said that other teachers had said that I was racist and that I had called, I had called the other faculty members racist, which I didn't. You know, it was a very professional email. I'm a, a stickler for being politically correct. And um, mm -hmm. it was a very, very, very direct email and, but it was taken totally out of context. So pretty, pretty big deal. You know, I kind of, I, I stepped out because I felt compelled to, you know, step out and send the email because I felt that it was wrong for these students to be threatened to, you know, with all these consequences if they did something that they believed in. And, and, and likewise for us to be told not to even talk about it, you know, I felt, I felt that it was totally absurd. So that's mm. where I'm at. <laughs> Talking about, I, go ahead. You go go ahead, ahead, Monica. Were you done, Ashley? Oh, no. No, I, I think it, I was going to just add, I think it has, a part of it has to do that I live in South Carolina. I think that's what has to do with it partly. So go ahead. Um, I just, you know, talking about connections and culture, I, this might be a good time for you to share some of your version of it or, you know, of it, Chris, what you were, you were, you were talking about the responses your kids had. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and um, one of the things I was thinking about with Ashley's story is, um, you know, we haven't experienced maybe talking about Trayvon Martin's case the same way that Ashley has, but I think we've all dealt with times where um, our principals or our authority figures maybe had a problem with what we were talking about in our classrooms and um, you know it, it makes me wonder you know what's the next step for someone like Ashley can we um, help her through that a little bit like have you has anyone else ever dealt with a principal who said like don't talk about this topic I don't know because I have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh -huh. So I'll just uh, go on, and we've got someone new in the chat. Looks like hey, how you doing? I'm Al. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Introduce yourself, um, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, Welcome. hey, I'm Al Elliott, a uh, third grade educator in uh, Hoover, Alabama, near Birmingham. Great. Um, um, Al, just to get you up to speed on what we're talking about, um, because I was in the middle of it myself, um, you know, uh, Ashley was talking about how she was wanted to discuss the Trayvon Martin case with her students, but her principal said, um, I don't want you going there. That's not wow. something we want you talking about. So Well then can I can I ask what, what age? What age are the kids she was I have high schoolers. Okay. I have tenth graders and eleventh graders. Okay. And and so I guess in in what capacity did you want to speak about it? Did you just want them to have like leader discussion or did you have like specific issues about surrounding the case you wanted to talk about? Well basically the way that it was handled he sent a general email out to the entire faculty saying not to discuss it at all mm. and so from that point well I had already discussed it within my classroom um, and was in the process of you know coming together with some you know great lesson plans to implement it in within what I was already doing and then he sends the email out saying that we shouldn't talk about it at all. 
Um, and as I was telling the others, you know, I, I, I sent an email out in response to the entire faculty saying that two, two or two points that I made during that email. One is that our, as a faculty, we need to be sensitive to the issue because I teach at a school with a large um, percentage of minority students. We have a 73% poverty index. And so we need to be sensitive to these issues because it's, this is something that my kids deal with with our kids in, in response to the email um, what our kids deal with. And then my second point was that we need to use the classroom as, a, as an avenue to foster the discussion in order to, to bring this in. It's the great place to do it. Um, the teacher as a facilitator, not a person who is standing there giving their opinions, but simply to facilitate what's taking place uh, as a part of the learning experience and, and that was shut down. So, so let, me, let me ask if I don't mean to I guess I'm new here, so let me let me just ask this though. So when you you say you had already been discussing it, well, what types of things were your kids bringing up? Like, what was their perspective on on the whole situation? Okay, well, well, first, um, this all kind of took place in the span of, of a week. Students had been planning uh, a peaceful protest. Um, I think the weekend before, uh, the week that I had brought it up in class. Um, we were actually reading the house on Mango Street, and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that work, mm -hmm. but there is a vignette within the house on Mango Street, uh, basically that talks about bad neighborhoods and how there are certain stigmas attached to bad neighborhoods. Uh, and from that, somebody brought up Trayvon Martin, and then it was like a rocket um, from that point. Uh, we began some basic level one questions where we just covered the facts. This is what we know. Students reference things that was taken, uh, a commentary on CNN, a commentary that they read in other um, sources that basically outlined the facts. And then from that point, they begin to, um, you know, ask why, you know, why was Zimmerman following him? Why, you know, just, just questions to just kind of gauge a, a, a greater perspective of what was taking place. Um, and then also some, some race questions came within the conversation. So during that particular class period, it was just a, a conversation um, that kind of went a little bit of everywhere. And then the next day I received the email and it wasn't necessarily because of what took place in my class. It was the news kind of uh, was leaked that the kids were planning this protest. And so principal sent out a general blanket email to the whole entire faculty saying that this is something that we don't need to talk about. Don't talk about it, period. That's it. Um, then the next day happens, the kids are, you know, continuing to prepare for the uh, for the protests. Um, Thursday, my you know a large majority of the school show up with um, with hoodies on, uh, Arizona iced tea, lemonade, uh, the uh, excuse me uh, the Skittles, and they're ready. One o'clock, they're going to walk out the class, and they're just going to walk around the track. That's all they wanted to do. Um, as I was sharing with the group, this was such a community event that when a couple of kids didn't get the, when they excuse me when a couple of kids went to purchase the items from the convenience store the convenience store clerk was like yeah i heard what you guys are doing great take it for free and go good, good job um right before the kids were planning to walk out the principal gets on the announcement and said that if you walk out of your classroom number one if you are a senior you will not graduate Two, if you um are on an athletic team you will be kicked off the athletic team and then three you'll be suspended for, for 10 days. And so it was a very, very, very strange moment. Um, the kids, some of them still walked out, but there was police everywhere. So they felt threatened and a lot of them stayed back. Um, so while they were, while that whole fuss was going on, well, half my kids left, they came back, left again. I was sending an email out that like I, I referenced earlier, that I simply said, we need to be sensitive to this issue and let's create a constructive environment within our classroom to discuss it um, so that the kids can really critically examine what was going on. So, in a nutshell. Wow. So tell us that's your a story. news story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they call and that's another thing. They call the news. They they call the news. The news was out there, and it, I don't think the news knew what was going on behind the clothes behind you know as far as with the announcements and things of that nature. But um, they could definitely see the police officers out there, administration. And it was kind of weird. One of the students told me, like, Miss Dennis, like, you know, once our principal saw the news, then he told some of the students to go on out there, you know. So it was, <laughs> it was a massive confusion. And, you know, it just really reflected 
the uncertainty of the administration. It was just a lot of stuff. But in either case, the kids felt defeated. And, you know, that was basically the, the, the day before spring break let out. And so we're on spring break now. And so we'll see how it uh, transpires once we get back. It's Al, right? Al yes. Elliot? Okay. So yes. you said you said it's Paul. <laughs> Hi. Um, you said that's a news story. And I was thinking something similar in that when you watch CNN or the news, you have this feeling that we're having this national conversation. But are we? <laughs> you know, it, right. it, you know I if if there's a school like that that kids aren't allowed to talk about these issues, I wonder, you know, if we're really having a, a dialogue. But can you tell us your story? You're working with very young kids, and one of the questions that I was hoping that you might be able to shed some light on is how do you talk to young kids about these issues? Is that a well, like yeah. the, the third graders that I have, the way I've been approaching it is if they bring it up, then we can talk about it. And and, and, and I, I live in, uh, well, I work in one of those districts where um, a lot of times things you? that happen in class get misunderstood yeah, and parents, before you. parents come and talk to you, they go and talk to the principals and then you have to explain and then it's like, oh, I guess it wasn't a big deal. So the way I've been approaching it is if, if the kids want to talk about, you know, really anything, then, then we'll talk about it. And, and oddly enough, none of my students have brought it up and I got like eight year old kids and none of them have, have brought up this particular incident, the, the whole Trey Martin issue. And it could be we were on spring break two weeks ago when the story got huge. And so that was the, the, when the story first hit the national media, we were, we were not in school. And so then now we're, we're gearing up for testing. Uh, with the standardized test and whatnot, and so it just it really hasn't come up. Uh, and oddly enough, even with the teachers, uh, it really hadn't been a, a conversation piece. Um, I have a pretty diverse classroom, but the school, the I know the faculty is predominantly white. I think they're only, I know the principal is a black male. I'm a black male, and then I, there's like maybe three other black teachers out of like maybe fifty. And and I, I guess I was just curious to know if this is a conversation among that's why I was interested in joining a hangout and hoping it was a diverse group because I was wondering would it be more of a conversation piece uh, in, in non black you know, environments or is it, I assumed everybody was talking about it, but then when I got off of spring break, everybody wasn't talking about it, you know, at my school. And so that was odd to me. I was I was expecting somebody to say, Hey man, you hear about this but nothing didn't you know, I didn't hear anything. We wasn't addressed by uh, by administrators at all to talk about it or even not to talk about it. It was, you know, within the school walls, it was as if, you know, it hadn't happened. Kasim, are you there? Yeah, he, he just tried to call you. Yeah, it, it, can he get on the, the phone? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hold on. Thank you. It's one of my students, by the way. So we're pulling this together. So you have a different story, but it's also a story of no conversation happening. Right. Uh, it just didn't actually come out. I didn't want to come in and just say, okay, you know, Trayvon Martin, what do y'all think? But if somebody, I was expecting someone to ask Hello? a question or ask if mm -hmm. I heard about it. Kasim, mm -hmm. Hello? welcome. How are you? Yes. Yeah. I'm fine. How are you doing? Kasim. I'm yourself. Good. You okay for a few minutes to talk? Yes. Okay. We have some educators from different places on the line here, Kasim. Could you just introduce yourself and then tell us how you felt about the Trayvon Martin issue and how you feel about my bringing it into the classroom? All right. Well, my name is Kasim Phillips. And like I feel like I feel like that's an important issue that a lot of students should know about. Like it's it's a good thing though. Like I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with people knowing about what's going on in the world or nothing. Like it's a good topic. Like a lot of a lot of kids are actually interested in it. And like 
we've been doing a lot of literary work on it. Like it's a good topic though. It's something that a lot of a lot of students feel concerned about. Um, Kasim, I'm a teacher in Utah, and um, yes. some of my students commented on some of your work recently around uh, Trayvon. And um, yeah. like you did a poem, um, Zimmerman K. Uh, uh, one of my students, uh, one of my African American girl students, responded to your poem and really liked it. And then your other uh, post, uh, it was called Trayvon Martin. Um, you know, I had a, a couple of students comment on your post there, and then I noticed you wrote back to them. Um, yeah. Any, uh, like when my students wrote some things to you, what um, what kinds of things went through your mind with their comments? Well, it was actually like, it was, it was like, I'm saying it was like something normal for me, like, because I'm used to things like that, but I'm just saying it's good to see like other kids, like from other parts, from other parts of the world, like <clears throat> actually, you know, talking about the same thing. Like, like a lot of people could, you know, just talk about this issue. Um, can I play your poem? <laughs> yes. Am I? Is it sharing on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play Kasim's poem, and I think I can do this, and then we'll see. <laughs> it's gonna be funny. Yeah. Zimmerman K <coughs> By me KP Walking down the street while coming from the store Somewhere in between Shot dead right on the floor Some guy say he's suspicious and looking Kind of funny but the lies that He has told now has him looking like a Dummy how you call the cops And report a little boy Maybe killing black people brings Zimmerman Some joy Okay, you called the cops, and now your part has been played. If you were so intimidating, then why you stayed? He knew what he was doing. The cops said just do not follow, but he followed anyway and finished it with a hollow. Now tell me this, Zimmerman, you're 250 and 5'9", and you can't protect yourself without using a 9? You took the wrong life when you messed with Trayvon Martin, and now you're going to see just exactly what you're starting. It may take a little while, some research in a trial, but it'd be worth the while, cause what you did was foul. <laughs> Very nice. I enjoyed it. That was good. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. Um, You're very talented. Thank you. You're welcome. Kasim, could you say oh, yeah, a little more a... about how? Could you say a little more about how you felt about the whole case? And I feel like I feel like that is why? really unfair. Like I feel like I feel like if if um honestly I feel like if it was a white boy that got killed, actions would have been taken way quicker. Like the person who did it would have been behind bars. Like I just feel like everything would have went much smoother and more easier. Like even though I feel like even though like they have. Like evidence against Zimmerman, like, but he's still not in jail though. Like, that's the thing. Like, if they had all that evidence and proof against somebody else, maybe an African American, that would have been enough to put him away. Mm-hmm. But that's just my personal opinion, though. Right. One of the things that I often struggle with, Kasim, is how to get you and other students to do projects around issues that you care about and when it might uh-huh. be appropriate for like to bring up an issue like this one um, but I notice you are cutting articles out of the newspaper you're like paying attention in a different way that I think you might have before yeah I don't want to I'm leading the, the, the question too much here though but how do you, what do you think is good or what do you think is not so good about us bringing up this topic in class? 
No, nah, I don't. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it at all. I feel like, I feel like everybody should know. Like, just if something else was going on, like same way everybody would know about it, like on the news. Like, it's gonna get to the school eventually. Like, everybody knows about it. Everybody's talking about it. So, like, whether you're talking about it at home or at school, it doesn't really make a difference. The fact is, like. Like, that's what happened, and that's just what it is. I have a question. So has it helped you um, in, in terms of your perspective on the tragedy to have it been discussed in the classroom? The fact that you had that opportunity to be creative and to express your, your, your opinions or however the case may be, has that helped you in your perspective of, of how you're dealing with this situation? Help me in, in what way? Has it helped you in how you've, I guess I'm asking many questions, has it helped you in how, you've, how you're dealing with this incident, um, with, with, with how, you know, the, the whole tragedy of, of Trayvon Martin, has, is it helping you in how you as an individual are dealing with it? The fact that you have an opportunity to discuss it within your classroom and to create um, that, that poem, that was, that was just awesome. Um, has it has it helped you in some in some sense um, in how you're you know how you're dealing or, or approaching this tragedy? I mean, I feel like I feel like it has helped me in in some ways. Like <clears throat> the fact being like like how do I word this? <laughs> like I do I do feel like it helped though. Like. Like the way, like the way I view things or whatever. Cause like I just feel like, like as I said before, like if this was somebody else, like things things could have went way more different. But I think it is helping me. I think it's helping a lot of students actually. Like not only helping them get a passing grade, but you know <laughs> to learn with <laughs> learn what's going on in society or whatever talk about things, interact with other people. Mm-hmm. But me personally, like, I wouldn't say it's really helping me. Like, it's not doing anything for me, but it is an issue that needs to be looked at and can be talked about and should be discussed among people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But I'm not, I'm not really suffering from the incident because, you know, it wasn't really nobody close to me, but I do feel like that was unfair. Like Trayvon Martin does deserve justice. Like mm-hmm. his killer should be behind bars. Mm-hmm. Good. You know, one one of the things that the Ashley who just asked you that question told us about um, is that she's not allowed to talk about this in her classroom by her the administrators at her building. Uh. How, how would you feel about that? I mean, I don't see why not. Like, I don't see what's the issue. Like, it's on the news. If kids are talking about it or whatever, why not talk about it? Why not put it out there? Why not let it be known? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't hide it. Like, if you don't want it in the school, then hey. But the fact of reality is, like, that's what happened, and people know about it. And, like, whether or not it's going to be in the school or not, is people still know about it regardless. Hmm. Actually, what do you think they're afraid of? Um, for, it, it seems like they don't want anything like a riot or something to take place. They're fear, fearful of some kind of uprising to take place um, because there's definitely a clash between, you know, how different students feel. Some students feel that you know what's the what's the big fuss over? Not only students, but let me say teachers. So the teacher told my students that, hey, if Trayvon Martin was white, then y'all wouldn't be planning a protest. And then two, a student uh, teachers told um, my students that I shouldn't be teaching because I brought up the issue within within a classroom. And mm-hmm. so um, I, I just think it's fear. I really think some teachers have that issue. Um, I teach in, like I said, a school with a lot of minority students, but there aren't very many 
uh, our, our, our faculty isn't very diverse. I think there's probably um, probably about 1,200 students, and maybe out of the 1,200 with the 1,200 students, we have probably about three black faculty faculty members. Um, and so, I think they're scared. I think they're scared, and I think, like I said, it um, is kind of tapping into some issues that they may have personally in terms of race. It is South Carolina, so. Mm. And I can say that because I'm, you know, not that Texas is any better, yeah. but I kind of grew up in a suburban, you know, white neighborhood, and yeah. I had I was friends with everybody. Um, and coming to South Carolina, it's definitely been a rude awakening. So I really think that that plays a part in it, um, and just simple fear amongst my administrators. I don't I understand that, but I don't really see what the fear is about. Like, I don't really think, well, I'm not over there, so I wouldn't know, but I don't think that would be anything for anybody to riot about. Like, but I don't think there's anything wrong discussing it, though. Yeah, I don't either. And the kids don't either. And they, they planned um, to walk around the track. They Everybody had hoodies on. They had the Arizona iced tea and Skittles. And some of them did, but it was really uh, a, a large number of students that planned. Community members had came out. The news was there. Um, but because of the threats, they a lot of the students didn't walk. And so it was peaceful. You know, they just wanted to have an avenue where they could, you know, kind of share what they believed. Uh, yeah, and just kind it's, of, it's basically, out. sorry to cut you off, but okay, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, it's basically just a matter of showing respect. Like, yeah. That's it. Like, like, that's all that really is. Like, they just showing their respect for what happened or whatever. Just, feel me? Just paying your respect. That's all that really is. That, that's as it. As long as nobody, nobody's not getting crazy, riding, nobody not getting hurt. Like, just simply showing their respect. That's all. That's it. That's it. So, it's it's sad. It's sad. Um, but yeah, it, it is, though. That is sad. Yeah, interesting. I did, um, and I forgot to mention this um, earlier, I, I've spoke with, um, or I gave one of my students my, my telephone number. They were trying to still organize something, uh, you know, because it, it stirred up so many different issues. And so I spoke with her today, uh, and one of the things that they're planning, they're going to do like a, not a, not a documentary, but just a video where they're going to ask other students questions. And they're going to have, you know, different students from diverse backgrounds answer questions about race, answer questions about Trayvon. They're going to do it all on video. I'm going to chop up the video, do some video editing, post it on Facebook and YouTube um, as a way to just kind of share what they feel since they don't have, it's not a, an avenue in our classroom to do it per se, so they're kind of creating their own. Yeah, that's that's good. That's a good look. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that comes. Al, um, I'm, I'm reflecting back on what you said that you expected people to ask you what you thought about things. And I'm a white teacher. And I've noticed how important it is when I walk into the teacher's room and there are three African-American colleagues sitting there, how, how important it is for me to just listen. And so, for example, one of the issues that they feel kind of deeply is, um, I don't know how to say this, but the experience of violence in, in their neighborhoods, in, in their growing up and so forth, has been violence of black on black violence. They're, you know, so th the fear they have isn't necessarily about Zimmermans out there, you know, but they do have fear for their children. So, I'm just bringing up as an example of trying to understand the bigger issues around this one issue. So here's my question. I'm getting to one. How do you think white teachers or other teachers might approach you and learn from your wisdom, your experience about what this issue means for you? Well, I mean, oddly enough, <clears throat> this is my first year at the school that I'm teaching at. Uh, mm -hmm. I came from a pretty much a predominantly black faculty, and then now I'm teaching at a predominantly white faculty. So the culture change is, is, is already present. So I know what I was used to. I was used to if something happened in the pretty big, 
uh, we, you know, everybody's going to be talking about it. But, but more specifically, talking about the larger issues surrounding Islam, I don't necessarily see this as a race issue as much as I see other things going on. I think that this has brought out the obvious profiling. When you hear profiling, of course, you, you have to wonder if Trayvon were not black, would he have felt threatened? But to me, the larger issue in this particular instance is what the police department did or didn't do. I mean, I mean, I've almost been addicted to what little facts they have, you know, coming out. And I know that the, the lead investigator classified it as manslaughter the night of the incident and the district attorney basically told him they didn't have enough evidence and then he was released according to the stand your ground and the fact that his dad is a retired judge and the fact mm -hmm. that he wasn't asked any questions by the officer on the scene which to me leads me to think he was exercising the right to remain silent. So to me, the way the way all everything was handled after, I don't even see the race. I what 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 I see is someone who has a, you know I guess politically connected ended up in a, in a, a a situation where if all of this attention hadn't come forth, you know he would you know he he would there would be the investigation basically was over until there was an outrage. And so mm -hmm. whether, you know, uh, Trayvon was black or white or whatever, to me the bigger issue is the police department in Sanford, uh, how police and, and how the judicial system in Sanford and other cities, uh, you know, how close is that? How common is this? Does the district attorney often make trips, you know, the night of a crime to, you know, give his opinion? And so as far as the race, I, I, I think that's the easiest thing to latch on to because he was, to me, obviously profiled. But um, I guess I was just expecting people to think about the other facts of the case. And I think when a lot of people hear race, they automatically don't want to talk about race. I've, I've, I've been looking at, uh, I hadn't seen any of Anderson Cooper's special, uh, but I've seen some comments that people have made about his special, like why are you trying to divide the races? Like a lot of people feel like if you talk about race, then you're trying to, have some type of divide, you know, between the races and not necessarily just wanting to know what, you know, what people are thinking. So I, I wasn't necessarily expecting a race conversation. I was mm -hmm. just expecting people to have taken an interest in the case. And then, you know, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm such a, I'm a nerd. So I know a lot about Android phones. And so when I talk to people and they really just don't know a lot about Android phones, I'm surprised. But then I realized, oh, I'm the nerd. So I guess I was expecting people to say, oh, man, isn't it amazing how, you know, no one knew about this and he wasn't arrested or whatever. So I really didn't see it as a race issue. So I wasn't expecting race conversations until everybody else started talking about, you know, the whole race, racial aspect of it. Well, if not race, to say that it's not a race issue, and I don't want to get into the you know the details of it. One thing I did not know that Zimmerman's dad was a retired judge, so that's very interesting. I just text somebody like, "Did you know that?" Um, so that <laughs> that's some good insight. Um, I guess my profiling, and and one thing that my students said that it's really not about it. It is about race to a certain extent because whether you know people want to talk about it or not, that is a part of it because racial profiling does exist. Um, but what my students, what, what led them to to want to organize a peaceful, you know, protest or whatever you want to call it, was the fact that no justice had taken place. It was a matter of justice more so than it was race. Race right. did did come up, but I think it, I think that's an important topic as well, um, especially for my students in South Carolina. They deal with it. Um, you know, they deal with, you know, teachers saying, you know, nigger under their breath and, and even wet back, just all kind of derogatory racial slurs and stuff that they deal with. Um, and, you know, so for them not to bring up race, it, it would have been, I, I would have had to question them, you know, but that was the first thing that they thought of. But at the same time, you know, to address teachers and, and everyone else who said that if Trayvon was white, then you know, y'all wouldn't be have this the same attitude. And they said, no, that's that's not it. It's a matter of justice. 
you know, um, the race was a small part of it. It was something that resonated with them because they deal with it. You know, they've been stopped by police officers for no reason. They could just be walking, you know, home or they've been followed in store, whatever the case may be. Those are issues that they deal with. So that part of the story didn't resonate with them. But ultimately, it's a matter of justice as opposed to, to race. Uh, mm-hmm. Kasim, you have any thoughts on that? Yes. No, nah, I feel like I think that's I think she made a very good point though. I think that's because that's exactly how I feel. Like I don't really like the race issue is not really like that really don't matter. Like it's just a simple fact like people killing people and get away with it. Like that's not fair. <laughs> I agree. No, nah, it was not fair. Cool. Um Hello. Hi, I'm still. We're still here. Um, Kasim, I I wanted you to mention that one of your projects in the fall was to write about your interactions with police officers. Um, yeah. So that's been an issue that you've explored too. Yeah, of course. Like <laughs> I experienced like the same thing. The same thing the teacher was just talking about. Like I experienced that very much. Like. Like matter of fact, earlier today I got stopped by the cops going to the store. Like, and I was and I was with my little brother. I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> like, all I I went in the store, whatever. Like, I went, I got my Dutch, or whatever. But I ain't have no weed on me. But they stopped me anyway. Like, oh, where's the weed? Nah, 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 nah. I'm like, ain't no weed, man. I'm bugging. But <laughs> <laughs> but I I experienced that a lot though. But I mean, when you experience it to a certain extent, like. You start to get used to it. You start to, like, you be like, oh, there go the cops. They about to stop me. Like, it sounds sad, but that's just the reality of it. Like, you got to think like that. When you and, come I, from- and I'm sorry to cut you off, but that, I think that's a large point that this whole issue has brought up. And I mentioned this is before you got on the line. You know, I'm an African-American mother. My son is eight years old. And as I was sharing with the group, I'll easily send him to the convenience store at 13. But that's a discussion. That's a conversation I have to have with him that, hey, son, if you're stopped by a police officer, it's yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Whatever they tell you, you just do it and keep it moving. And it's sad, it but it's a reality. And I think that's what people are dealing with now is that reality. And some people don't want to deal with it. Um, and it's unfortunate. Exactly. But I think you too, though, you know, like a lot of people, like as a, as a black man in Birmingham, Alabama, that's just normal. Like, and it, it is sad, but I don't know black men that don't know that's normal. And so that discussion, <laughs> like I have a son, he's 12 and he's been in the car with me. We're in the neighborhood and I'm getting pulled over for like not coming to a complete stop at red at a stop sign type stuff. Like nothing for <laughs> wow. real, for real. Like a two blocks from my house type stop. So that's just that that's what's normal. I mean, and so I I think having a conversation the, the people are already having those conversations and the people that don't want to have those conversations still don't want to have those conversations. So I, I don't think anything like this is going to say, okay, now let's talk about it. No, they don't want to do it. What they, what, what, what they want to do, and, and here's, here is a truth. There are a lot of people of color that, are, that do participate in criminal activity. There are people of every color that do, okay? So if I'm a police officer and every car that I stop, right, not the ones that I'm profiling, but if I'm called on a bus and I stop somebody and they're black, you know, eventually I don't see how we can expect police officers to not get tainted by their experience. You know, it's, it's, it's like me. I, I walk down certain neighborhoods and certain streets and I feel a certain way. If I see, you know, a group of guys over there, if they look like maybe they, you know, into some activities I don't want to, you know, be into. We, we all kind of, you know, use our prejudices and our awareness to kind of, you know, warn us of some things, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, I, that that's a reality too. So I think that this is bringing you know light to that. Uh, but to me specifically, this particular thing—if if the exact same thing happened to somebody white, 
I would like to think there will be some outrage. Maybe the group of people that would be outraged would look differently. Like if Trayvon Martin was a white kid, George Zimmerman is the same. Maybe the group of people or the thousands of people that we see may be more a more diverse group. But I still think I would like to think that I live in a country where social media would have still gone crazy if a 17 year old kid at all is shot and then the guy goes home. I would like to think we would be outraged. Yeah, there's a it's interesting. It makes me think about, um, and this may pertain to it, but it definitely came to mind, so I'm going to say it. Um, someone brought this to my attention where if an African American, or well, first of all, if a white female goes missing in the country, it's like headline news. But let an African American woman go missing, you don't hear about it, like at all, it, at all. And I thought about it, like, oh my God, that is so true. Because like in Atlanta, there's been a couple African American women that have been missing, and there had been no headline news at all. But let it be a white female go, let her go missing. Oh, headline news. Up exactly. Up, and hands down, and it's sad. That it's like that, but I mean, I think that's the conversation that the conversation that needs to take place, and the the reality that we need to critically look at. Because I'm hoping that the generation that we're teaching in the classroom that these are the kids that are going to change the paradigm. You know, that as we're instructing them in the classroom, to, hey, look at look at how the, look at what's taking place in our country. You need to critically think about this. Is this right? Do some judgment so that when they become the next Anderson Cooper or the next, you know, media commentator, they're not going to speak with the same, you know, use the same biases. So that that's how I see it. I hope that we could foster this conversation, like I said, so that as they grow up and become leaders that they will implement the change that we need to see in this country. Um, I'm wondering if I could read something one of my students wrote today. Uh, and it was on a post by one of Paul, or a comment on one of Paul's students' um, posts. Uh, it was about the hoodie movement. And she says, uh, the hoodie movement makes me quite proud to be a citizen of this country. The fact that there has been a strong national reaction to the Martin incident is reassuring that civil society and social capital are alive and well in the United States. But I think it also reveals something about the humanity of our society. Stereotyping is pervasive. We all do it consciously and subconsciously. It comes in many forms. Um, and she says, I'll admit, my defenses go up a little when I'm close to someone with a lot of tattoos, whether I mean to or not. I'm not actively prejudiced against them. My inner self is just imbued by stereotyping, as is true with any human. But what we do with those stereotypes and how we act on them tell a lot about our humanity. And I think, you know, that's the kind of thing that these conversations lead to, is, you know, those fundamental issues about our humanity. And if we don't have those conversations, you know, that's the danger. Right. Well said. Um, we should uh, give each other a break here and uh, finish up um, as we go. Um, but let's go around and hear if the, you have some final thoughts. Kasim, thanks for joining us. Uh, do you have any thoughts having had this conversation? Just leave it way open that way. Feel, I still feel the same way that I feel. Nothing changed. It was good hearing everybody's, you know, thoughts and opinions about the situation or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like what I said, that's what I mean. That's what I'm sticking to. Ow. Thanks. Uh, I'm just happy that I was there. This is my first official Google Hangout, so... I'm just glad to be in the hangout. It was cool. I learned a lot. Thank you. And please join us another time. We, um, we'd love to hear. I, I, I'd be fascinated to know how you're getting some of these issues to third graders. Because I, I kind of feel like you must be. But Well, I mean, generally, what, what ends up happening is... We try to talk a lot of things out. What I do, I spend a lot of time asking questions. Um, and what they'll do is 
they'll tell you what they're thinking, right or wrong. You know, if if they're you know trying to get in a fight or if they're pushing each other, and 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 the violence kind of is more direct at that level. Uh, if they're playing a game, if they feel like they've been wrong in a soccer game, when they get the opportunity, they're going to try to strike back. And so just trying to have those conversations about building a community, uh, you know, how we're, you know, we're really all in the same, you know, this is us. This class is a unit. Understanding that they come as an individual, but, you know, the, the class rises and falls together. Uh, just, just really trying to talk to them and get them to talk about it, get them to see what's right as opposed to telling them what's right. Because they really come in with a sense of right and wrong. It's skewed toward themselves being always right. But they do have a sense of fairness. Uh, but globally, uh, you know, I, they hadn't brought this particular issue up. Um, so if they do, I'll be sure to give them the right about it. <laughs> Thank you for being nerdy enough to join us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> Um, Ashley, your thoughts. Great. Thank you so much um, for having me. Like I said, when I saw the tweet, I latched right on given um, the circumstances with everything just that just took place last week. So I really appreciate you guys giving uh, me the opportunity to talk about um, the issues that are taking place at my school. Um, next week, we'll return, uh, and I'm, I, I definitely know that the kids will have something to say about it, because like I said, the incident happened, then we went on spring break. Um, I was definitely moved by the poem that uh, the young man wrote, so I'm definitely considering um, bringing that uh, into the classroom. Um, it's, it's National Poetry Awareness Month, so I, I definitely will, will use it, um, I can say. So I'm hoping that within the next week or week or so that I can uh, come back and we can chat and I can kind of give you an update about what's taking place in the classroom mm -hmm. because it's definitely something that I feel like we need to uh, need to discuss. And even though my principal has said not to, I only got two more months left and I'm done. So <laughs> keep your job. <laughs> I may know. I may need a job. So Utah and New York and I, I forget where the, the other state. I, I may have to send you guys my resume. I, I promise I'm not as <laughs> radical as you think. <laughs> it's okay. You, you can be as radical as we think. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Um, you know, it's. Um, I think my student probably summed up things better than I can, but, uh, you know, it is. It it always goes back to race is not easy to talk about, whether you're in you know, a uh, school in Alabama or South Carolina or, you know, in a school that has a lot of Caucasian students in Utah, um, you know, race is not easy to talk about um, and justice is not easy to talk about, but if it doesn't happen in the classrooms, I'm afraid that it doesn't happen very well or, or at all. And just wanted to ask you to briefly mention the case that your Muslim student brought up. Oh, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but it's the um, Iranian woman who was killed in um, California, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, the, I have a Muslim student who said, okay, we're talking a lot about Trayvon Martin, but what about this Iranian woman who was killed in her home, and, and there was a note that said, you know, go back home, you terrorists, or something like that. And she said, well, you know, there's no mention of that in the news there is some mention of it in the news, but she said that those kind of instances get um, get uh, no mention at all. So she's more concerned about her, you know, the the Muslim citizens of the U.S. And this woman has been in the U.S. 20 years, and they moved into a new neighborhood in San Diego, and she was killed. Wow! Two weeks after there was a note even put on her door that said, "Go home." And and then she was found uh, murdered with a note that said something like "you terrorists." Mm -hmm. So you know there are some issues of justice and uh, you know that we need to talk about. Wow. So what issues get into the media and then get into our classrooms? I I always want to. So I I wanted that's my final comment, and Monica you can say. It's not either or. It's like I think we have to keep Trayvon Martin 
in our classrooms and the issues and the justice and race and profiling and I think those are really important interesting issues layered with how do we know about what happened which is you know what is in is the curriculum all the time in English I think these days but um so but at the same time I always want to be a little bit I don't know humble or tentative or worried that there are other issues and other things that are elbowing their way into the classroom too so I appreciate your students saying that it was very useful Monica you have any thoughts as we go tonight <laughs> just um, appreciate the voices and just try to take it all in great so thank you all um, and I can say that we've been doing this for several years now this was show 291 um, on edtechtalk.com um, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network, worldbridges.net. And Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo um, kicked that whole thing off. Um, and we'll continue conversations like this each Wednesday. Thank you all. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.